Hey loves, it's Angelica and I'm back with a new rice water video. Today we are making the most powerful rice water recipe you have ever seen, unless you figured this out yourself. We are starting with half a cup of rice and then this is a full cup, it doesn't matter how much water it is. We are just washing the rice. I didn't wanna go to the sink so I'm just showing you here. As you can tell, this rice is pretty clean and of course, if you feel your rice is completely clean and you don't want to wash it, you don't need to wash it. But I find that I always wash my rice just in case and you know sometimes there could be like an insect or two in the rice. So I just swirl it around in the water like so and then I pour the leftover back into the same cup or if I wash it in the sink then it just goes down the drain. But if I wash it like this, I like to keep it in the cup and then I like to use the water that I use to wash the rice to water any plant that are in the house just because I'm sure there's a little bit of nutrients in that water. So now I'm using this Pyrex dish and the reason why is because I'm going to be using hot water, not boiling water, but it's going to be hot. So I would advise you use glass or metal, do not use plastic, but if it's the only thing you have, you can go ahead and use that. So now I'm going to be adding three full cups of distilled warm water this is just boiled in the kettle and it has been sitting for a while so it's hot enough to touch you without burning you so the reason why i put the hot water is because it softens the rice and allows me to get a lot of the nutrients out of the rice without actually boiling it now I usually like to go by the re by the yao women's recipe and i do every single thing that they do except for boiling the rice because I know that different types of nutrients can get denatured once you boil them. So I find that using hot water is just the closest we can get. And now for one of the ingredients that makes it extremely powerful, I'm going to be adding fresh rosemary sprigs. Now this is just a big rosemary bush that's outside my house and I'm taking about seven sprigs of it. Now you can find rosemary in your local health store or your local store where you just buy food in the spices section or the herb section you should be able to find it there but if you don't find it there you can go ahead and check in the spices section where there's dry spices and you might find some dry rosemary you can use two to three tablespoons of dry rosemary and if you don't have any rosemary don't worry we'll get back into how you can incorporate it later on in the video but i just let that sit now for a couple minutes and while i do that i am using a grapefruit now the yao women use a pomelo fruit. I have actually never seen a pomelo fruit in real life. So if you have access to them and you can find them, use that. If not, the second best thing is a grapefruit. And if you don't have a grapefruit, which can also be quite expensive, the third best option is an orange. So you can use an orange, but you're only going to use the peels. And I suggest you don't use the essential oil because I just find that it's not beneficial for my hair and this also truly helps with the smell and it just does something aside from the smell. It like absorbs all the terrible smell that you get from rice water but it also just does something that I can't even explain to the rice water. If you've ever made rice water without and with, you would know the difference I'm talking about. It just makes it feel like a little more silky, you know? So now I'm going to take those same rosemary sprigs that have been sitting in the water and I'm pouring them into a glass jar. Again, you can use whatever container that you have access to but the best option is a glass jar and be more careful than me and don't spill the water all over but yes the other thing you need that's the most important aside from the the container potentially being glass is that it should close completely air tight. If it's not airtight, your rice water is going to go bad and you'll be wondering what you did wrong. It's because the air is going in. So there what you saw me doing is making sure that I push all the rosemary down because if there's any rosemary that's exposed to the air, it can also mold. So any little bits that seem to be like right at the surface, I am completely covering them with the grapefruit peels with no inside completely and look how nice and fancy and bougie that looks but also extremely beneficial. I will be getting into all the benefits of everything later on in the video so stay tuned. So now what I do is I put it in the cupboard for 24 hours to ferment for a little bit and for the rice to expand and release all its beautiful antioxidants. And as you can see, you can tell it's been like a little fermented because it's got like a little bubbles when you shake it. You can see that's like the fermentation happening. So no, the rice water is not done. And I suggest that you do this on your wash day, meaning after you've already done whatever you usually do, do this on your wash day so you're not tempted to use it. And then you can go ahead and use it on your next wash day because this is not a 24 hour process. I find that fermented rice water is way better than just rice water that's fermented like for a day. 
So what I'm doing right now is taking out the grapefruit peels and the rosemary sprigs, but I am not throwing them away. Right now what I'm doing is getting all the nutrients out of the rice. So now I'm pouring it back into the same container that we used before. You can see there's a rosemary sprig that was stuck in the rice. I just took that out and I'm removing any little sprigs of rosemary that might be stuck in there again because now we are getting to one of the most important parts to make sure you have extremely effective rice water. Now a lot of people at this stage would prefer to boil it to make you get all the white color, you know, and make it look super starchy like milk. But for me, I just like to knead the rice either in one hand or rub it between my palms. I find that it is way faster if I just rub it between both of my palms. And what this is doing is causing friction between the rice, breaking the rice into smaller pieces. And while this is happening, you are releasing all the antioxidants and the starches, which is what makes it look more white. But that's how you get more nutrients. You don't have to blend this up and make like a rice conditioner because even if the grains of rice are already blended and it's like a conditioner, or consistency it still can't absorb into your hair because the particles are just going to be too big so it's actually pretty much a waste of time or I would say it's the same thing it's not going to get you any better results so I like to do this better because I would never have any problem with like any white particles or rice getting stuck in my hair so I just continue to knead and knead and knead and rub it between my palms until the rice is until the rice water is like a very milky consistency to the point where I can't see my palm if I put it down in the water, that's when I know it's done. So now it's time to pour it back into the same glass jar, which I washed as you can see. And now I'm using a strainer and then I'm just mixing it up perfectly to make sure that the particles are evenly distributed in the rice water before I pour it down the funnel and also into the strainer to make sure it catches all the little bits of rice that are in there. Because now that we've kneaded the rice, we have got all the nutrients out of the rice that we need. We do not need that anymore. If you want to cook it, you can cook it. I would not advise it because I think it would taste bad. But if you want to make use out of it, if you have any animals, you could cook it for them. Or if you have any plants, it's like a natural fertilizer. You can just put the rice in the soil and that's going to make sure that you make use out of the rice that you have. So now that it's done, as you can see, even with this wooden, sp wooden spoon, I'm using the end of it. When I mix it in into the rice water, you cannot see the stem unless I put it towards the glass. So that's how you know that you have perfect rice water. So now we are putting back the rosemary and the grapefruit peels back into the rice water to continue fermenting. We don't need the rice anymore, but we still need to get the benefits out of this, including the absorbing of the smell and releasing of all the amazing benefits of rosemary. I have tons of videos on rosemary, so you can check that out. So now it has been fermenting for five days and this is what it looks like. Everything sort of settles to the bottom. So once you shake it up, you'll be able to actually see that the rice water is still all nice and milky. And this is the point when it's ready to use. Now you can ferment your rice, your rice water for even longer but for me I like to cap it at five days to remove everything out and then if I want to continue fermenting it I would just leave it to ferment without putting back any more rosemary or anything like that. So now you can see it doesn't look bad it doesn't look moldy even up close to the camera it just looks like maybe changed a little bit of color because it has been sitting in water for five days. It does not smell rancid it just smells like lovely it's got like a nice citrusy rosemary smell with the amazing benefits of that as well. So once I take all that out, I am now going to decant what I'm going to use and show you how to use into a spray bottle. So now I'm using a strainer again, just in case I didn't catch any grain of rice or like rosemary sprig in there because we don't want any of that getting in our hair. Now you can do this in a dish, you can put it in a bowl and just pour it over your hair, but I prefer to use it in a spray bottle because I have perfect access to the scalp and I only fill my bottle up about three quarter ways and then I put in distilled water to finish it up because it is extremely potent after the fermentation process. And now I'm adding my essential oils. So first I'm adding my tea tree oil. By the way, you might be wondering why I'm not putting the oils in the big jar. It's because sometimes I might forget to use the big jar and just abandon it. So I make sure I focus the essential oils only in the spray bottle that I'm currently using because essential oils are extremely expensive and I don't want to waste them. So while I was talking, I added 
10 drops of peppermint oil, and about eight drops of rosemary oil in addition to the tea tree oil that I added at the beginning. I shake that up and it is ready to use. Now it is time to put the rest in the fridge and that's going to stop the fermentation process. So if you want to continue fermenting it, sometimes I do this for two more weeks, you just put that jar back in the cupboard for two more weeks, but the weather is going up and down. It's extremely hot, then it gets cold. So I thought five days is enough. I'm gonna ferment it for that long. I kept it in the fridge and I can use it for up to two months without it going bad, but always smell it just to make sure. So that is my rice water now ready to use. As you can see, my hair is in twists and I am spraying this all over my scalp only first because one of the amazing things about rice water is that it has amazing benefits right at the roots of your hair, but also on your entire hair shaft. So once I'm done spraying it on the roots and working that in so it doesn't drip down, I'm going to go ahead and spray it all across every single bit of my hair up to the ends. So now let's get into the benefits and any information that I might've missed. Now here's the thing. Rosemary leaf extract and the rosemary essential oils are almost the same thing, but they do have slightly different benefits, very, very slightly. So I would say if you have extra rosemary, use it. If you don't, you can use one or the other. Rosemary sprigs are way more affordable and way more accessible, so you can just use that alone. If you only have the rosemary essential oil, again, you can only use the rosemary essential oil and abandon the rest, but if you have both, why not make the most of it and use both like I do? That's what makes some of this so powerful. Now, the benefits. Let's start with the main thing, which is the rice water, which is the main ingredient in here. Rice water contains amino acids to boost hair growth. It strengthens hair, promotes hair growth, and increases shine. It has vitamins and ingredients that support hair regeneration at the roots. It also has vitamin C, B, and E. The fermented rice water also increases the concentration of the amino acids and makes it more potent. Think of it as something like kombucha or kimchi because lots of research has been done about the, the importance of fermented ingredients and how they make almost anything just more potent. So that's why I like to ferment my rice water for five days instead of just using it overnight because I truly see a difference. And this is the only kind of rice water that doesn't leave my hair feeling really dry. When I ferment it for 24 hours, it leaves my hair feeling very dry. When I ferment it for five days, it is less dry, not completely not dry because it does have a little bit of starch and a little bit of protein in it. It's not a lot of protein, but it can make your hair feel a little hard. And then why I really love the tea tree oil is because it is antibacterial, antimicrobial, and it is amazing for stimulating hair growth. So in case you might be slightly sensitive to fermented ingredients and it makes your hair or dandruff get a little bit worse, the tea tree can actually help set off that. And then the peppermint oil is also amazing for stimulating hair growth right at the roots. And despite rice water not having a lot of research behind it, there's lots of anecdotal references by looking at the Yao women and a bunch of people who have also tried it and seen amazing results. And that's why we have all these products popping up including including rice water in them and the ingredients and amino acids from rice water. And then we have rosemary. Rosemary out of everything in here is the most researched ingredient and it is used in so many hair growth products as well. It is amazing for boosting hair growth and it has been shown to be just as effective as 2% minoxidil, which is something that's actually prescribed by dermatologists for hair growth. Now I would suggest you do not leave this in your hair overnight. I use it just like the Yao women and I only leave this in my hair for 20 minutes under heat with a plastic bag or a plastic cap over my head. I would suggest you don't go over 30 minutes if you're going under heat and don't go over an hour if you have no heat. I'm using the Amica Nice Cream Cleansing Conditioner or you can use the Sulfate Free Shampoo. Then I go in with the Olaplex Deep Conditioner and I use this leave-in treatment. This is currently what my hair looks like. Hit my face on the side of the screen to subscribe. Watch the two videos on the other side if you'd like to see any more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye!